listening to the Heartland Author Podcast. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For this episode, I had the honor of interviewing retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Jason Pike. Lieutenant Colonel Pike is the author of A Soldier Against All Odds, which is about his interesting military career. Jason's second book, Out of the Uniform, Back into Civilian Life, will be about veterans' benefits in the United States. I'm here with retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Jason Pike, who is the author of one book that's already out and a second book that I believe that is going to be released in the near future. Is that correct? You're right. I've got two books out. With a, well, the, I've got one book out, and that's A, a Soldier uh, Against All Odds. And, oh, by the way, I'm happy to be on your very honored to be on your show. And I've got another book out that's coming out. It's about out of the uniform and back into civilian life. It's about getting out of the military and transitioning to get your veterans benefits. So, but that's going to be yet to come. And I've got a few other things out there in my mind. Uh, but uh, yeah, but you got it right. Right now, it's A Soldier Against All Odds, which is a national best-selling uh, book uh, out there. And you'll find many podcasts and many reviews. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Heartland Author Podcast, and feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Yeah, so my name is Jason Pike. Uh, I know you, it, it, I'm a senior lieutenant colonel, retired. I've been in the Army 31 years. I was in the Army 31 years. I served nine years overseas in uh, five different countries around the world. I've seen the world. I've seen a lot of things. And um, I've got a lot of lessons in life. And I've got a lot of uh, stories, I think, that will entertain you or give you value. Inspiration, hope, survival, persistence is what I'm thinking my life could uh, bring on to your life or it doesn't matter if you're in the military. It could be in any phase of any any phase of life that you're in. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Now, I'll start with your book that's currently out. Without spoiling too much of your memoir, what is your memoir, A Soldier Against All Odds, about? Oh, it's about a life of struggle, pain, and just coming to terms with your own manhood and life from a very early age and just struggling to become a success and having multiple failures and fiascos along the way. The hardest part about this book to try to get is try to, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about their uh, dirty laundry. Everybody's got it regardless if you're the president or not. And uh, I, I come out with that from a humility point of view to try to give you lessons learned that I have learned. Uh, so, and a lot of it, I feel that you'll be inspired from, and uh, you'll come away with thinking that you're not that bad after all. <laughs> and uh, but it has to take somebody who comes out there and shows you how they struggled in life. I, I I'm, I'm a disabled learner. Okay, reading and writing are my worst subjects, but I'm a national bestseller. I have I've had a lot of issues with academics along the way. I had a lot of issues with physical frailty, but I got over that, worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And um, pain and failure were introduced to me very early in life. And I took it for granted in many ways. In many ways, that made me stronger. Um, I took it, uh, I, did, I, did, I didn't, I didn't. I wasn't. I was too young to be disappointed about. I just figured that's the way life is, and um, but it really does build you up and resiliency. And a resiliency is in these in this in the day and age now is a big key word. I mean, I grew up to be resilient, but some people don't, and maybe some people learn about that later on. Uh, but that's pretty much what the book and the story is about, in multiple different angles that are just. From law enforcement angles to actually doing stupid stuff, and uh, and so that's where I'm coming from with the book. Now, uh, without spoiling too much about your book that's uh, going to come out at a later date, what is Out of the Uniform, Back into Civilian Life about? I understand it's about the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Yeah, so this is a more of a self-help guide for veterans or for, for people transitioning out of the military, you know, uh, to when they come back and ha they want to get money, 
They, that's what they want. Well, give me my money for my disability. And a disability is not necessarily a disability. It's, it's, it's something that the VA calls a toenail fungus, hypertension, uh, things of that nature can be a disability. But it's, of course, we know those are not disabilities. But this is to get your benefits from your service that you've served on active duty or what have you. And you, you, it's money. It's paycheck. So this is more about that money uh, figure as far as what can I get from the Veterans Administration? What benefits can I get? How do I do it? I've got links in there. And I tell it to you in a, I am no expert. and I don't have any certification in the Veterans process but i did it the hard way i did it my way and i got lessons in there and and i try to break it down to you on how to get your benefits and how to go about it and that i also want to emphasize that you know what a lot of people think you know i didn't serve in I, I served in combat but a lot of people think well you know i didn't serve in combat that means i don't get a benefit no that's not true oh man but i wasn't in the front lines i never got shot in life no, that's not true. You still can get benefits because you served. And um, what I'm trying to do with this book, the second book I've got out, what is, for, is really specifically for veterans to get their benefits and to encourage them to get their veterans' benefits. Yeah. Now, uh, this is a question I'm asking because uh, uh, a former president is facing criminal charges <laughs> over mishandling a classified document <laughs> current president is under a special counsel investigation for uh, uh, misplacing classified documents. Were either or both of your books required to go through any vetting by the Defense Department to make sure that classified information didn't make it into your book? So we did our own investigations to make sure that it didn't go into our book. So uh, there's nothing in my book that had to be cleared with the Department of Defense. I have been, you know, and I, I wasn't, those sensitive areas that I were in, I didn't talk about. And, I, and I, I changed names. So you can change people's names on very, there are some sensitive areas where people did some stupid things to me, allegations, where I changed their names. And also there's been a period of time I'm not guilty. So but um, no, 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 really, um, I'm, I'm clean with that, uh, and uh, there has been no repercussions since the book came out, which was in the spring, or early spring, and no, uh, I didn't have to go through any clearance uh, because I, I changed people's names, yeah. Now, are both of your books self-published, both of your books traditionally published, or is one self-published and the other traditionally published? The first one, A Soldier Against All Odds, is a, it's, a, it's a truly a self-published book. And the, uh, and the other one, uh, Out of the Uniform, Back into Civilian Life, that would be self-published. and all, Yeah, it would be mostly self-published. I'm going to go through. It'll be in the bookstores as well. But both of them will be on Amazon, and both of them will be pretty much self-published. Um, the second one I'm going to have in bookstores and things of that nature. But um, you know what? I learn as I go along. I, I learn as I go along. And uh, so I didn't know anything about writing a book. And I don't know anything about marketing a book. And I just kind of learn as I go along. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. And I'm pretty excited about it. I got a few I got a few other ideas out there uh, that I'll give you all. Not, not now. Not now. But later on, you, if you just hang on to me, jasonpike.org. And just hang on to jasonpike.org. You'll you'll see more things in the future. Yeah. And I'll include a link to jasonpike.org in the text description is, of this episode once it becomes available to listen to on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and other podcasting platforms that host the Heartland Author Podcast. But uh, my next question is, how important was your father in your life? Oh God, he was the probably you know I, I we titled the he was a very 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 important a short answer but we titled the book A Soldier Against All Odds about the only damn thing I had in my favor was my father <laughs> if I would give all honor to anyone it would probably be my father because he was a great father figure uh, a great man of his own and um, I you know I had my disabilities I had my physical problems but. He was one of the few people that believed in me secretly. He believed in me secretly, meaning that he didn't, I mean, 
the, the siblings and the mother, they knew that, you know, Jason, you know, he's all fucked up now. And so, uh, but my father was like, Jason, he, 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 he showed it through action. He says, you know, I believe in you. I, but he didn't say it, but he, he acted that way. And so my, my book, A Soldier Against All Odds, is dedicated to my father. Sometimes in life, actions, you know, speak louder than words. You don't have to say I believe in you. You can just sort of show the action of it, and he did. He did very well, and he did. And he also just showed. He never. He he, he believed in the underdog. He, uh, the underdog is someone you know who's losing. <laughs> so he said. He always. I said. You know, when I was watching uh, football with him, and he loved football, and we loved. Well, I don't know who. I don't know if I should go for the Dallas Cowboys or the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know which one I should root for. Everybody's rooting for a team, and my father would say, "Son." You just root for the underdog. And, but he was talking about me, and he was talking about himself because he was an underdog himself. He, they would, you know, he, he grew up as a white trash type, barefoot, stealing food type of kid, uh, not even having a father. He was a bastard child, and he even told me. So, so um, no, he, he, he grew up that way, and, but he was a very good father, and I honor him. And I have a conversation with my father in the book. Yeah, and that's how my story is developed through that way. Now, could you list one good, one very bad, and one very ugly situation of your 31 years in the Army? Oh, very good. Oh, my gosh. The very good. There's a lot of very good ones, but one. I think one of the very good ones was just having a child, having being a father of a child. And then I was so scared to be a child. I mean, I was so scared to be a father because I didn't, I didn't know, you know. And so once I had a, a daughter, and um, I said, oh, my God, I didn't know I was such a good father. Like, you know, and I got it from my father. So I said, wow, this is crazy. And so we don't, sometimes in life, and I, I only became a father when I was in my mid-30s. And I didn't, I was scared to become a father. And that was a very exciting time. And I I realized that there was so much more to me. I didn't know. I, I didn't want to be a father. I said, well, my God. I didn't. And so, but I, once I did, I was like, wow. I became a very, very good father. Um, the very bad, um, very, very bad time in my life. So that was a good time, having a child. I just thought, wow, I was, I'm a great father, and I was good with kids. The, uh, a bad time was just making mistakes, and I made many, 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 many mistakes. And uh, through the uh, through the military, um. Oh, I think a really bad time for me was um, I got caught as an officer. I was locked up, uh, and, and this is a bad thing. In the military, we have certain standards, uh, higher standards than civilian life for the most part, and we have to go. I was locked up for driving under the influence of alcohol, and uh, I was going to be thrown out of the military. And I had to face the court and the people and my, the army and uh, apologize. And I had to do a whole lot of things over a, a two-year process. And this is, I mean, I know a DUI, a first offense DUI, for most people, you know, you just do your time or your court. or your. But this was, in the military, when we get locked up, it's a different form of lockup, meaning we have to face a different type of win. We, we face the civilian courts and we face the military courts. And... Uh, that was sort of a come to Jesus type of moment. That was a bad, bad time. I felt that I was getting kicked out, but I, I, I worked with the process, which was very difficult, and I, and, and, and I survived it, and I got out of it, and I, and, I, and, and but a lot of people, you know, I mean, a lot of people would have quit. I mean, they would just say, no, I'm not going to deal with it, but I did. I stayed in there. Oh, and that was the bad time, and that, but then the bad times sometimes give you strength for the future times, and um. A very, very ugly, uh, 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 an, uh, an ugly, an ugly time that I had was being thrown under the bus. I mean, I guess there's a show called The Mean Girls, and but you know, being thrown under the bus or ghost lighting or those things. I mean, we all in life, we all get talked about bad about. I mean, that's just part of life. It could be gym talk. It could be this or that talk. But when it becomes professional, I mean, being thrown under the bus, being ghost lighted. Um, professionally and going on going through a federal investigation of false allegations that you've done bad things and in my case they accused me of uh, being espionage against the US government 
I mean, I was a spy. And so there was other things that were involved that, was, that are in my chapters there. And um, I had to face all that. And of course, nothing ever happened with that. Now with the DUI, I had to go through, I had to, with the, well, that was the bad time where I, it was my fault. I did it. I had to face the win. I'm responsible. And I had to face that and get through that. Now, the ugly time, I'm talking about uh, espionage against the U.S. government, that never occurred. It was just a made-up accusation. You know, there's a lot of times that you have accusations, and accusations can bring you down, and they can make things ugly for your life. And that's what it did, and I had to face that, and nothing ever happened with that. And um, that was just a bunch of bullshit. It did, it did reduce my credibility in the military. It did reduce my... Uh, the people that were true that knew me knew that I was good, but it word gets around that you've probably done something wrong. So false allegations can do very bad things to people, and um, and it and so. Uh, but this was an official one, and it I I served honorably. I did my time, and I came out honorably. But um, I've had to face a lot of different situations in the military. And a lot of people think of the military as, you're going to war and you can get shot at. Yeah, I've been shot at and I've gone to war, but that is not, uh, you know, I, and I've been to various countries, but really, I mean, there's an old quote in life that says, the enemy is within. And I believe that. And there's a, it's like, watch out for the enemy that they are within. <laughs> so, um, I, I, you know, the Taliban or the enemy in Afghanistan or wherever you're going to, we're trained for that. We get prepared for that. But there's also enemy within the ranks that want, that might want to take you down, especially if you're going up. And uh, it's called competition, and uh, backstabbing competition. And those that was the ugliest time that I uh, served uh, that I had. So I've had very good times. And most of the times of my life have been good, but... When you put a memoir out, you have to show your heart, and you have to show the good, the bad, and the ugly. And most people, that, to get their attention, you've got to go into the bad and the ugly, which I have done, um, uh, which I have. And that was the hardest part with the book, with the book was getting to show that uh, true bad and ugly. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, what was the hardest part? part of transitioning from a military career to civilian life for you? Oh, wow. So I was a young man. I was probably, well, I'm, well, I was 48. I'm, I'm 58 now, but I was 48 then. And uh, when I, when I retired, I'd done 31 years. Um, and so uh, I think the hardest part is that you, you leave a team of people, you have a, you have a certain structure of life and you just it just don't you just don't leave it you just don't go away you have to somehow function in another civilian life you have to and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna become a civilian you're not gonna put on your uniform anymore i think the hardest the hardest part was just finding a purpose finding a purpose of where you belong because you've i've never been in civilian life unless i was like a teenager and now i'm thrown back in here and I'm like what do i do now i'm i'm financially i'm fine i don't need the money but what what do i really want to do and you've got to find that purpose and it may take a while it took me a little while eventually i i did work for the centers for disease control for a little while and then my biggest passion is what we're talking about now is writing these books and hiring people to help me get these books out and so and, and then going through all these stories so i think with a lot of veterans you'll find them hopefully a lot of them will just go into veterans issues it could be disability issues it could be nonprofit organizations but it's finding that purpose and that would be just for anybody who's retiring you you're you're moving every three to four years two to three years and you're going up the ladder and you're going to different schools and now they say it's all done it's all gone now you've got to think, well, where do I fit in now? A lot of that's the hardest part is to figure out where to fit in at. Yep. Now, one last question. And this is going to be related to your book uh, that's coming out in the near future. Could you share a standout example of a benefit or assistant program that veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces often overlook but could significantly improve their civilian life after service? Yeah, so I think 
I don't like the term disability. It's not necessarily a disability. So a lot of people think, I don't want to go and be labeled as disabled because that's considered um, less than best. It's going to hurt me in my whatever I want to do. But really, it improves your score with jobs, with job applications. With the, So you might get, okay, 10%, 20, 50. I, I don't care what damn percent you get. It's that you get a disability from the Veterans Administration for the Service Connected Disability. What, 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 but the thing is, is a lot of people will argue and say, well, no, that's going to hinder me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to label me. I says, no, it's actually going to improve. It's going to improve you because you're considered a veteran and you have a disability. The disability does not reduce your ability to get a job or do anything else unless there's a unless it's at a category that's unemployability but not and most people don't go that route and then once you go to, that's called unemployability but that doesn't happen unless you want it to happen and you look for it to happen but you're going to get money and you're going to get a percent and that federal jobs state jobs county jobs or even regular civilian jobs they they will give you regular uh, priority you know i mean they'll they'll give you priority points priority assistance for other jobs of course you're going to get a paycheck as well and uh it's like it's like a it's like planting a seed that grows like in the future like you might be in your 20s 30s or 40s but you don't know what's going to happen in your 60s or 70s and you want that plant you want the plant to be growing there for the future in case you become you know truly truly disabled and you need that assistance so a lot of people are not thinking 20 30 years from now it's not only the money that you get but it's the also the assistance the free medications and the and the, and the health care that you're going to get if you don't have health care so I, I you know I, I don't believe in a lot of these people thinking that they shouldn't they, a lot of people thinking you know you know i wasn't here i wouldn't come i wouldn't did, didn't do i didn't do this i didn't do that it's not about that. I'm going to save the government money because I don't have to apply. It's not. It's not about that. It's not. It's not even about that. It's about. It's your. It's like you get social security. You 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 put in your time. You get social security. You put in your time. You should probably get your VA benefits, even if it's a zero percent, because a zero percent. That's where the seed starts. So, I I come across a little different with this message than a lot of folks. Yeah. Well, Jason, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jason Pike, I thank you for appearing on the Heartland Author Podcast, and you are a wonderful and interesting guest. Well, you're welcome. I'm very honored to be on your show. I uh, appreciate it. You know, I can answer about any question you want me to, and uh, I, will, I can, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Jason was a wonderful guest for this podcast, and I wish him well with his upcoming book. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write your imagination. Bye for now. You can learn more about me and my book writing projects at camparenapollo.witsite.com forward slash author AAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at author AAC and on Instagram at AAC Scribe. Copyright 2023, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this podcast episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty-free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.